Welcome to our review on imaging with electromagnetic waves. So what we're going to do in this little review video is have a look at a few different ways that we can use EM waves to carry out imaging on the body. So the first one is through the use of infrared waves. So we can use a device called a thermal imaging camera, which is then going to produce a picture which is called a thermogram. And they have different colours based on how much infrared radiation is being emitted. So you can see in one of these little thermograms on the right there, so you've got two big knees there. The right hand knee is a perfectly normal one, whereas the left hand knee, because it's got that red and the orange on there, that tells us it's emitting more infrared. So that's a sign of an infection. And the way that we get that image is by using something called a charge coupled device or a CCD. Because what that does is it absorbs the infrared radiation and produces that image with the colours that then get added by a computer to make it easier to distinguish between the different amounts of radiation. The second electromagnetic wave we can use, as we've already mentioned in a previous video, are X-rays. Now, the way that this actually works is that when you actually have X-rays going through the body, then bones will absorb X-rays. The soft tissue, so skin and muscle, however, does not absorb X-rays. So when you've placed that photographic film underneath the body part that we're actually taking the X-ray of, then the X-rays are absorbed by the bones so that what we end up with there are a lighter patch, the white bits we can see, whereas the soft tissue where it's passing through, then the X-rays get absorbed by the photographic film instead, which makes it darker. So you get those difference in contrast, and that means that you can see very clearly what the issue with the limb actually is. We can also use that charge coupled or CCD device for detecting X-rays. So what we can then do is use those colours to show the different densities of the material that we're actually taking the image of. So the higher the density, the more X-rays are being absorbed. Another type of scan that we can use that rely on X-rays is computerised tomography or CT scans. And these are quite nifty because what they're going to do is take these slices through the body without actually having to slice the body. So you can see an example of a CT scan on the right there going through the skull, giving you the lovely picture of the eyeballs and everything. But it does allow us to reveal information about small sections that we can take through the body. The next one are gamma rays. Now, as we've already mentioned, we can use these as tracers. So what we're actually doing in terms of a tracer in medicine is we'd give someone this radioactive material to either inject, swallow or inhale, depending on what organ system and part of the body we wish to investigate. And then we pass a scanner over the surface because as that source inside the body actually emits the gamma rays, then they will pass out of the body and be picked up by our scanner. That then feeds into a computer, which provides us with this lovely colorful image. So the top one there is two perfectly healthy kidneys. You can see the nice red color there showing that they're all working as we'd expect. Whereas the bottom one is showing the kidney on the right of the image, that one is working. The one on the left, however, has not taken up that tracer for some reason. So we know the left kidney is where we need to investigate. While we're thinking about tracers, it's worth remembering it's not just medicine that we can use gamma rays as tracers in, but we can also use this for underground pipe work. So that if we've got a gamma source within that pipe, then as opposed to having to dig up the entire pipeline to try and work out where the leak is, which let's be honest, is kind of annoying if it goes under roads, etc then what we can do is just use one of those Geiger counters on the surface to detect an area where the count rate increases. Because what we'll find is where the leak is, then that will cause an accumulation of our gamma source so that we have a much higher count rate there. And then as you go beyond it, then that will drop dramatically so that we know that there's a leak in that region which narrows down where we've got to dig up. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now describe how infrared radiation is used for imaging. You can describe how X-rays are used for imaging and how gamma rays are used for imaging.